go. Hello, we are Geeks Assemble, and today I'm with Susan, um, and we are talking a, a British cult TV classic. As you can see, we're, we're talking Octahu, as it says on Susan's screen. No, we're not, we're talking Doctor Who, <laughs> the faceless ones. Um, from 1967, I think it was, um, a six-part serial starring Patrick Troughton as the uh, second Doctor. Um, and this one, The Back on Earth. The Back on Earth in, uh, in, in mid-1960s, um, and it all takes place at um, Gatwick Airport, of all places. Um, so... Without further to do, we'll go to Susan with our opening thoughts of the faceless ones. So basically, this is Shirley Valentine meets uh, meets Doctor Who meets uh, meets all the all the episodes that that happen around Heathrow versus all the episodes that happen around Gatwick. Um, this is. This is a cool, uh, it's a cool invasion uh, story. And uh, the aliens want bodies to uh, reface, basically. And, you know, you, you'd think it was kind of like, um, you know, like the mirror face thing, but it's, uh, it's actually, um, they actually have a really cool, like, organic uh, sort of. Um, it's uh, it's got like spindly things on them, and then there's like, um, and then they're they're in like these jumpsuits for Earth atmosphere and stuff, and. Uh, and basically they they utilize some technology that's worn on their body to uh, assume the identity of earth people and stuff like that. So, and the doctor, Jamie, Polly and Ben are, are, are there to thwart their issue because, um, because they have discovered a dead body and they've discovered a murder and they've discovered the, um, what they assume to be uh, a problem with uh, airport personnel, but it turns out that it's these aliens and uh, they don't ever name the aliens, but it's pretty, it's pretty interesting. And, uh, the whole thing with like the aircraft and the situation is uh it's just it's got it's got some really high tension moments but then it's pretty padded out it's a slow mm -hmm. burner this one yeah but a lot of the patrick Troughton stories and uh some of the john perkery stories are slow burners because it, they, they, they want to make sure that they hit some certain points in their story arcs. And uh, one of them always happens to be that the, the, one of the companions is put in direct danger and direct harm. And first, first Polly and then Ben and then, and then Jamie were all put in direct harm, direct uh, conf conflict with the, this this alien race, and so you know it it hits all those points, and then then it resolves. Um, but it you know it's it's a, it's pretty great. And uh, Pauline Collins, you know I loved her in in uh, in uh, Shirley Valentine, and. Then she goes on to play the the, the beginning of, of Torchwood in, in 
in later Doctor Who as Queen Victoria. She she's a great actress, and um, and I think that that I really uh, have a lot of I have a lot of kudos for her. So, um, yeah, it, it was fun to rewatch. Uh, I I liked the. I liked it. I actually watched the version that I have in color. And so it was, I mean, some of the imagery was absolutely gorgeous. Um, the reconstruction animation was beautiful. And so I really enjoyed that. Uh, I liked, when I first saw it, um, I actually liked the, the, the tele snap version of it and, and the, the audio with the tele snaps, which was, um, done by loose cannon i think but anyway whoever it was done by they did a really good job with it because they had some they had some of the footage and you get little peppers of it and one of the one of the cool things will be one of my favorite moments um but all that all that to say i i did watch the color version for for this podcast right now and uh and so it was just enjoyable it was a really fun watch and uh and yeah i i i know that lee probably had a different version but um i just I, I can't wait to hear what he has to say so i'll just pass it back over to him and so over to you lee well thanks so well you can watch the color animated full six episodes you can watch the black and white animated episodes or you can watch the animated episodes with the two remaining surviving episodes, which that's the one I did. I watched the two remaining episodes with the black and white oh. animation. So, um, and I agree with you, it's a slow burner, this. Um, me personally, I would have said, they could have told this story in four episodes. Um, but no, they did it in six. Um, yeah, Pauline Collins was brilliant in this. Um, she was set to be the next companion, but that never happened. Um, I think this one, Ben and Polly are hard done by on this. Two episodes. The first two episodes, and then you don't see them until the final two, two or three minutes of the final episode. They, get, they was given the same treatment as Dodo was back in the war machines in the Hartnell era. Mm -hmm. they, they just, they were just sidelined the two companions. And I, I don't think that was fair of the actors. Um, Especially since it know, was their last episode. Yeah, if, if it was their last episode, they should have been involved more. Yeah, instead of, you know, instead of just shoving them out of the way for the last... Um, four episodes just you know I, I just don't get that um but that's the way it was things was done back in the day i suppose um yeah it, it's a sort of um their take on invasion of the body snatches isn't it really the uh you know the the the, the chameleons can only survive in the human form as long as they're the real humans still survive you know, I mean, uh, they're they're they're, um, they're they're asleep. You know, they're asleep that way, and they keep the form, um, which is a great idea. Um, the way the way there was um, waking up later on in the episode, the waking up all the humans and and all the um, all the chameleons were just li liquidated, you know, liquefying or whatever was happening to them. That was, um, but the design of the chameleons is, is quite good. Um, uh, the way they animated them, you know, with the like lizardy eyes, and was quite good. Um, yeah, I mean, a hell of a lot was going on in that airport. A lot of people walking about. Where was the security? <laughs> I know, I know, it was. Well, they were just allowed to walk out and go into the, the commandant's office and everything. But um, and was there was there airport security back then. Well, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure they had airports. Hardly security any. And stuff. Do you remember? Do you remember like Airport Port Seventy Six? Uh, yeah. I mean, they had stowaways for crying out loud. <laughs> well, um, 
but in this, in this story, um, well, this story was the first Doctor Who story to ha feature the Doctor's face in the intro. And of course, what was the story called? The Faceless Ones. Um, <laughs> but also as well, in this story, it stated, it stated the Doctor's human. Because the um, Captain Blade, I don't know in what episode, episode five or six, states that the Doctor and the human Doctor were both human because he's seen the um, the results of the um, scan or whatever. There was, he said, there's only two humans here, and it's you two. And I'm thinking, all ah, right, so this was before they decided to make him an alien. Yep, probably. Um, people forget things like this, which is... Um, but didn't that, Jamie, okay, just, just to argue this point, didn't Jamie yeah. say that he wasn't from this planet and he wasn't from this time? Just, just because Jamie is, is discounted by a lot of uh, intellectually superior creatures, um, he, he nailed it. He really nailed it there. Mm, yeah, but I mean... <laughs> Kudos to you. It, it's, but it, people forget that the, the alien side of, of this series only started... Well, it would have been the war games, wouldn't it, really? When the Time Lords was invented, mm -hmm. uh, all before then, mm -hmm. the Doctor was assumed to be human, uh, and a few times was stated to be human, and this was one of them. Um, Except for Susan Foreman said said differently their first episode. So the companions always know that the Doctor isn't human. Yeah. So I'd, maybe it's the, yeah. Hmm. Well, it's it's. It's one of those things in the way it was just it was just like a fleeting remark you thought oh i'll have to remember to uh, comment on that um yeah it's it's, it's it is a good story as i said uh it's, a, it's about an inv an, inv an inv hidden invasion um the, the scheme to steal young bodies um miniaturize them uh, and take their place uh, on Earth because um, of because of their planets being um, was it at war or it was ravaged by war or something like that. Um, but the Doctor still put a stop to it, of course. Um, and as I said, the a lot of people don't like the animation. I lo I love the animation. I lo every Doctor missing Doctor Who was been animated because they do vary in style but for me it's the only way that we are going to get a complete complete set of Doctor Who from Troughton and Hartnell is by by animation um, I'm not Susan's a fan of telly snaps I, I, I just can't stand telly snaps I, I bore easily that way uh, <laughs> but everybody is different but yeah and the performance, well, as soon as I saw the Trout and Fraser and, you know, not that, so I could see the performance rise. And, and so, so it does, and the, and the animation does, does go well with the live action. And it's, it's really well done. So uh, you got anything else to say, Susan, before I go? Favourite moments? Yeah. Yeah. Um... I just, I enjoyed the, the, I enjoyed the fact that it, that it was, um, again, they landed the, the TARDIS on the, on the tarmac at, at, mm. a, at a London airport. And again, the, the, the police box was quickly <clears throat> like, uh, what, what is the other one? Uh, uh, time flight. And yeah. um, I mean, it's just, you know, it, it's like it's like the TARDIS just aims for the tarmac. She knows that that's a landing spot, so that that's where she always lands. I don't know. That's just fun. And the other thing that uh, that was um, sort of uh, cool was the uh, 
the the fact that they actually had a little bit of of uh, of what actually sounded like um, air traffic control, London air traffic control, which you know is one of the one of my favorite things to listen to uh, in, in United Airlines, which they allow they they used to allow you to listen to pilot to ground trans uh, conversations. All right, they know that. And it's and it, to me that's really enjoyable. I mean, it's like it it it, it gives you sort of a real time perspective on on weather and and air you know air patterns. Like sometimes you'll you'll hear about some turbulence coming up or something like that, and you just know you you end up knowing things before everybody else in the cabin, and it's just enjoyable. And th this time you heard a little of that that uh, air traffic control to pilots, you know, giving them permission to fire, to start their engines and, and tra taxi and take off. And, and then how they followed them 50 miles out, which was great. You know, that's, that's, that is the normal way for the, de oh, for yeah. the, for the uh, departure control. And so that's fun. I mean, that is really actually accurate and fun and i bet you uh the the watchers when they first saw it were just like oh that's a that's a bit that's a bit interesting <laughs> you know is that is that how it really is and and sure enough it really was so that that's fun i mean and considering i've never heard it in in the uk um uh -huh. i really I, you know it was it was sort of a, a re revelatory scientific sort of moment for me anyway anyway that was cool and um and so yeah back over to you lee right um out the way troughton and, and fraser hands work so well together they, they are like a comedy duo um and you can see what uh, Fraser, J Jamie stayed with Troughton right through the, you know, his full run because he was a great companion. Um, Space and one, yeah, and one of my favorite moments in this, it was an, it was an animated moment. So I'm I'm hoping it did happen in the real in the real episode. The doctor and Jamie are hiding from the police reading newspapers behind the newspapers and Jamie's Jamie's newspaper was upside down. Um, <laughs> because possibly Jamie can't read, can he? Unless oh. the doctor's been teaching him. So but it just made me giggle where there was both sat there, the doctor behind the newspaper and Jamie's and Jamie's newspaper was upside down. That was <laughs> just a little giggle there. But um I did like if Pauline Collins was going to stay on as the next companion, there mostly was going to be a bit of romance there because that was building up to it with Jamie and, and her character. Because he, he seemed to be a bit besotted with her. He snogged her twice. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was one of my favourite moments too, was the, yeah. the, those, those uh, you know, chin grabs and the intimate kisses and that, yeah. yeah. So that may, that could have been the first. Well, I suppose that you could say there was romance in the Tardis before then with Barbara and Ian, because you always <laughs> thought that you always thought they mostly would end up together. That and was you mostly, the ship that sailed. Yeah. yeah, and you mostly thought as well, Polly and Bennett most probably would um, yeah. stay yeah. together as well. But uh, but there was the, that that that's. Them scenes there was sort of best scenes. Any companion was showing affection to someone else, yeah. and it was it was just a sweet little scene as well. I thought, yeah, this, if they'd gone with Pauline Collins, it could have been interesting for the next season. Yeah. But there again, then we wouldn't have, then we would never have got Victoria. I know. So. Well, you know, it swings and roundabouts. Um, anything else you'd like to say? 
Um, yeah, well, my, uh, I guess my, my favorite moment was, uh, was when they were, um, was when they were doing the, the transfer of faces mm -hmm. and you'd see the alien transforming into the, into the human face. That was cool. Yeah. And, uh, and the other thing that um, I liked was the, was when the, the, the aircraft uh, hit that 50 mile perimeter and then, um, and, and the, and the fighter jet was following it and the fighter jet was shot with a ray and, the, and, and ended up crashing yeah. and, and they couldn't find it. But the, 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 the normal jet plane probably like a like one of the original dc 10s or dc 8s or whatever and it uh it, it angled up and the wings the wings ha that had been like sort of this way to the fuselage the fuselage is here yeah. uh they bent down so that they were more like rocket fins and it just went up and it's straight up into the into the spaceship. Yeah. I thought that was so cool. <laughs> I was like, that's that's some creative, uh, you know, beautiful imagery. And um, and I don't know if it, if if it was quite that way on the on the uh, when it was originally broadcast, but the the. The animation of that was beautiful, and like it was so spacey, and and the spaceship was like square. It had a nice sort of bulbous bit, and like, yeah. I mean, it, it was a really interesting design. And then the the, the bottom opened up, and it was just like, it, you know, Lee is wearing a Star Wars shirt, and it was just like entering one of the big, um, the big su super star destroyers from the bottom. There's like yeah. a big opening, and then the whole the whole aircraft went in and landed, and it was just oh my gosh, cool tech, fun, beautiful uh, outer space uh, spaceship creation design, and then the 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 way that they turn the the like a normal aircraft with with wings, you know, parallel oh, or um, perpendicular to the fuselage sweeping back to form fins. I mean, they were, they were uh, playing with that technology and they still are with, uh, with stealth, stealth planes and other things with the sweep back wing to give them more, uh, more speed and more, mm -hmm. more distance and in this case, turn it into sort of a ballistic missile, and I was just fun. Uh, I mean, I really love that that bit a lot, and uh, because it was coupled with the, the ground to air transfer or conversation, and and then the you know the the fighter jet following. Uh, I mean, it was that was a really cool scene, and uh, another. And another scene that I really liked was um, when they uh, when they when they found the miniature bodies. Mm. And um, I mean, they said that there was fifty thousand kids who in those in those drawers. I mean, if if you thought that way, you'd see those drawers next to Lee, and you'd go, "How many? How many miniaturized? Uh, you know." Men no, are in are in his drawers, and so. <laughs> Excuse me, <laughs> you keep out of my drawers. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry, uh, <laughs> but it was it was. Uh, I mean, like that 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 was a cool concept. Anyway, um, and I, again, you know, it was fun to watch. Uh, you know, part of the reason they had to get. Jamie away from the doctor is because when Jamie's with the doctor, they are like super clingy and super, mm -hmm. you know, touchy touchy. And 
you know, space husbands. But um, so the only way to get Jamie anywhere near in, in a place to be romantic with anybody else is to just separate him from the doctor for a while. And that's, that's really what you need to do. But um, Jamie and the doctor stayed together all the way through till the, the two doctors story. And so, you know, they were together for a heck of a long time. And that's really fun to think about because, you know, they, uh, they really were sort of uh, a good couple. And, and it, you know, they had those fun things like when they were holding hands and when they're trying to take Victoria later on and stuff like that. So it's fun. And like the other thing that's really, um, you know, it is really unfair what they did to Ben and Polly for their last episode because yeah. it was yeah. kind of like, um, oh, you're you're back in 1967. It's just, you're, you, could, you could go be an admiral on a ship and you could go help him. Um, you know, after, that, after, that's it. After missing, it, after missing four episodes, you know. And they shook hands and like, yeah. it was like, huh, and then bye. Whoa. I'd, uh, back in the day, I don't think the people, the knew how to write companions out properly. No. I mean, I'm just looking who wrote this now. It was, uh, it was Dave, Mal Mal Malcolm Hulk. And David David Ellis and Malcolm Hulk wrote it. I mean, Malcolm Hulk is a is a, a who a famous who writer. Um, yes. But uh, I, I just don't think the, the writers back then didn't really know how to write companions leaving uh, until later on in the uh, in the seasons. But yeah, early on, Terminus was a great one. Uh, that was a good departure. She mm -hmm. turned into a social justice warrior, a medical warrior, and 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 you know, boom, there goes, there goes yeah. Nissa, and I, you know, I, I just like that, the, that sort of departure. Yeah, yeah. The, the, this one was just, you see you bye. Oh, all right. <laughs> what? <laughs> but I mean, this is a, this story is very overlooked out of the Trouton era. Because people, fans always go on about you know the you know uh, web of fear, uh, the abominable snowman, um, the, the ice warriors, um, the wheel in space, the invasion, stuff like that. Yeah, they always seem wheel in space. They they always seem to overlook look this one. The, the early the early season of, of Trowns. Um, but it's 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 a damn good story. Yes, it's padded, but it, it proves. To me, it, it warrants my love for Troughton because he is one of my favourite doctors. Um, Troughton, Pertwee, Tom Baker, those three for me on TV are, you know, are just the best. Um, Colin Baker and Paul McGann for me are the best on the audios. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, Troughton for me is one of my favourite doctors. Um, and he had a good run of... The, he, he was the the monster, the monster era, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, this one, yeah, it's very, very overlooked, and it should. Uh, and they, they have, they have done the animation proud. So, you know, if you know guys out there, check it out. The faceless ones, it's brilliant. Um, yeah. Anything else, Susan? No, that, that was it. Um, oh yeah, because they they had to keep the the bodies alive. It was more. It was like a pre Zygon Zygons. Yeah, yeah, Pretty, <laughs> it's true. Which is as well is, is like the body snatches as well. Um, yeah, exactly. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, I just don't get. Uh, you know, it, it happens a lot in Doctor Who. But as you said, that the TARDIS materializes on the Gatwick runway, and what does the Doctor do? Get out, run, and run away, run, run, run split, split. You don't think yeah. why? Why? Because you can't keep you can't keep after that you can't keep the doctor out of interfering in anything. So why run? <laughs> you can't get rid of the doctor after that. Right. <laughs> He's always sticking his nose into everybody else's business. Yeah, but, um, and and also as well, this one, uh, the TARDIS is stolen again at the end of this one. It's true. 
which uh, the, uh, Fraser and T Pat Trevor and go off to find out who was stolen the TARDIS. And of course, we know the next story, of course. Yeah. Who has, who has stolen the TARDIS? But we, we can't really say at the moment because we, we haven't reviewed that one yet. We're waiting for the animation to turn up for that one. Yeah. <laughs> but it's my favourite monsters of all time. <laughs> but so, shall we go to final say and score then? Yes. Over to you. Okay. Well, um, due to a lot of enjoyable moments in this and a lot of enjoyable things, um, and the and the per the persistence of of um of you know peril for the for the companions uh, throughout the whole thing um and some fun outer space stuff and fun alien stuff um i will give this uh an 8.5 um wrist uh, human being changers out of 10. We haven't got a technical name for that. No, a human being <laughs> Oh, I don't have a technical name. I'm not, I haven't come up with one yet. Thingy. <laughs> thingy. Right, there you go. A thingy. Yeah. Um, thanks for that, Susan. Do you know what? I think because it's padded out a little bit too much. It, it could have been done in less episodes. Um, and the way the, tre the two original companions in this, I'm going to go 8.5. And I'm going to say 8.5 postcards from Roma out of 10. Good one. You see, there's always, there's always a link with the... <laughs> good, one, good one. Yeah, eight point. But it's still, it's still a pretty good thing. And you said trout and rock. So you, please, guys, the faceless ones, um, please leave a comment below, guys. Um, let us know what you've thought of the uh, faceless ones if you've seen it. And also, she's got an itchy. Look, did you see that? Look at that. She, yeah, on you on YouTube or on YouTube because you'll be watching this on YouTube. Um, if you want to be notified by any video we put up, press the bell button and you'll get a little ding, ding. every time we put a new video up. And please say so you can comment on our videos there. Please be nice. Oh look, there was a ding. But um, say so we're on YouTube, we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter. I've got a, a, a personal inst Instagram of mine as well, where I just put up photos of what we've done and, you know, just to, it's just a fun little page. And um, if you want to be on our casts, because we do need, you know, fresh blood, new faces. I mean, the old, the old guys are there, but, you know, it's, it's, it's um, <laughs> getting them out of the house, you know, in front of the cameras is getting a bit hard these days, but, you know, they're, we're just trying to get them back together. But um, if you want to join us, please, please do message me. I'm on Facebook uh, or whatever, or on Instagram or whatever, because uh, I didn't realise you could message on that until the other day. Because <laughs> I found I found a message about from about seven months ago what Susan sent me. <laughs> I didn't realise. <laughs> but yeah, message me or or message any of the gang. And they'll mostly pass the message on to me, as long as you, as long as the message is nice. We'll, we'll see if we can get you on. Um, so, I think that's it. So, until next time, be safe, travel safe. Bye bye.